I'm Michael Jai White, and this week we're at the Pretoria Regionals of the LFS Tournament. This city is known for its tough competitors, so let's see. Who will conquer? Who will rule? Who will become the last fighter standing? The LFS rules are not just designed for athletes of various martial arts disciplines to compete with each other. They're also designed for maximum entertainment for you, the audience. Don't believe me? Take a look at this. So far, we've seen some great female fighters qualify for the championships in Pretoria. Our next bout is between Ansi van der Merwe and Clohilde Junior Essian. Let's take a look. Uh, my name is Ansi van der Merwe and I'm a kickboxer. I've been fighting for three years. Uh, there are a lot of things that got me involved in doing MMA. Um, I think firstly was bullying in high school, so I decided I don't want to be a victim anymore. From there on, everybody left me alone, so bonus for me. <laughs> I think kickboxing is underestimated a lot, but in my opinion, kickboxing is one of the deadliest styles there is. I was like a very friendly person. I don't know if books come When I step through the ring to fight, um, sometimes everybody say they have a game plan going, but as soon as you get hit once, your game plan's gone. <laughs> I'm a potential LFS champion because I have a strong will, I'm determined, and I never give up. My name is Clotilde Sian, and I'm a professional boxer. I'm original from Cameroon, but I've been living in South Africa almost five years now. I'm powerful, and I have a very good technique. I'm a potential LFS champion because I'm the stronger one and I'm a better fighter than anybody else. I really feel sorry for my opponent because I'm brutal and I'm strong. My favorite move because I have my long arms, so I love my jab. I like using my jabs. I'm clever and I'm powerful. That's my, that's my best point. When you jump into a ring, you still, no matter how small is your opponent is, but you're still a little bit nervous. I put everything I have, 100%, for this uh, fight coming, because I need to be the winner. Don't mess with this bad girl. Nancy van der Merve up against Clotilla Jr. Essian here in Johannesburg. A kickboxer fighting a boxer. Anzi be looking to capitalize on those kicks, but Clotilla with a substantial height advantage should be able to have some dangerous counterattacks. Anzi van der Merve there with five wins and four losses. Uh, the kickboxer, as I said, at a height disadvantage, but her kickboxing should help with that against Junior at 1.8 meters tall. Her hand reach will give Anzi a challenge, but so too will her experience. 38 wins with only one loss. Let's get this going. Round one is on. Ansi immediately with that front kick. 
and an answer with a jab from Junior. She says she enjoys using those. You can already see the height advantage coming in now. And she will need to get those kicks back quickly or at least set up some combos because she doesn't want to give Junior counter opportunities. Junior looking very confident and searching for an opening in Anshi's defense. And there she goes, countering with that combo and pushing Anshi, putting her on the defensive. Anshi looking for the takedown now to get out of that onslaught. She gets it, but Junior doing well to stay in control of the situation. Now in Anshi's half guard, a good place for Junior to be if she can just make some space for the striking. Looks like she's trying to get her knee there and uh, out there and wants to pass. But Ansi with an iron grip on her leg, waiting for the time at her end. I'd say Junior will get the points for that engagement, both for the uh, defending the takedown and for the few strikes. Right back they go. And Junior looking crisp. Ansi seeming a little wary, and she's throwing those kicks a little slowly now. Now uh, they look sluggish coming back, and really Junior is uh, already on to that and just keeps catching with that jab. Ansi's movement is way too slow, not managing to slip those punches in, and they're finding their mark almost every time. Right, and now Ansi for another takedown, and a great sprawl from Junior. No points for Ansi for that then. And there we go, the end of the round, Junior looking good there. And uh, those counter combos putting Ansi on her back foot and giving Junior control for shots like that. All right, next round underway. Junior moving well, and Ansi very flat-footed. It's going to be a big problem for her. She's going to be telegraphing her strikes for Junior. And she can't move quickly off of Junior's attacks. When you've got that height, uh, height advantage to contend with, the key is to move. And you can see Ansi offloading from way too far. And uh, Ansi is uh, going to have to do something about that. Oh, going for the takedown again. But you know, from so far, she doesn't get it. No surprise there. Junior cutting the angle nicely, and they're back up. Ansi moving back and covering up. And uh, here we go oh, with a spinning back fist attempt there. A bit wild, not finding home. And Junior looking so comfortable with her range. Just throwing back and putting Ansi on her back foot again. Uh, Junior using that jab to find her range and set up well. Ansi with just no answer at all and some blood in her face now with all those shots. Just look at how uh, comfortable Junior looks, able to put that jab out with almost no consequence. Junior coming out on top there again. All right, so let's, let's have a look at that again. Uh, just a show of the control Junior has had for the whole fight so far. Ansi on her back foot the whole time. All right, here we go with the last round, and Ansi will need to push hard for the win here. I doubt she's got the points. And she's already looking tired. We saw her with the mouth open earlier. That's usually a sign of fatigue. She's just showing her moves to Junior and giving Junior all the time in the world to offload combos like this one here. Junior wanting to finish this in spectacular fashion. And I got to say, Ansi has shown some serious resilience and mental toughness to keep going. And she's throwing kicks back, not settling at all. But Junior back with those jabs and Ansi not moving out of the way. Her face full of blood now. And, uh, oh, here's an opportunity for Ansi. But no, Junior with just too much energy and strength. And stopping that takedown at Ansi, losing more energy. Uh, Junior controlling this from the start. She's happy with the takedown attempt. She's happy to stand and trade. Ansi really has no answer here. Oh, look at her. She's done, I'm afraid. Ansi looking very tired. I doubt we're going to see much more movement from her. And the jabs from Junior to basically set up anything she wants. Those kicks from Ansi not doing much. And just trying to keep Junior away more than anything else. And you can see Junior just ignoring them and jabbing away for the setup, throwing some knees in there, not using too much energy at all. And Ansi now, hands down, she's completely done. Junior engaging it well now. I gotta say, what a tough opponent Ansi has been. And Junior might be controlling this fight, but Ansi is not giving up. She's not giving it to her. She will not go down, and she keeps coming. Oh, a lot of fighters would have just given up by now. And uh, there we go, those jabs just so devastating the whole fight putting Ansi on her back foot. And, uh, oh, there may be a winner, but really two winners. There we go. The winner by decision, Clotilda Jr. SCI. She's a competitive girl. I really respect her, and uh, she, she's, she's so brave. I thought maybe I can finish it in the second round, but she, she keep coming, she keep coming, she don't give up. And Jr. qualifying for the grand finale in Johannesburg. Coming up, it's the welterweights. My name is Brian Fury. I'm a kickboxer, K1 fighter, with an background in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Krav Maga, Shidukan and MMA. My nickname is The Love Tap. The um, reason for that is you'll see the, my legs are quite potent. And uh, when my feet tap you, you fall in love, your knees get weak and just drop for me. 
martial arts is a career for me. I do this full time, um, personal trainer during the day, and martial arts trainer at night. It's Kalali Kenneth Zilatile to fight Brandon Faree for a spot in the regional final here later on. Big age gap, but otherwise a fairly even matchup. Uh, battle of Stana for sure here. Uh, Brandon loved Tat Faree with 160 wins and 45 losses to his name. He's not going to be dancing for love tonight against Kalani, the killer Silatile, with just three wins and three losses. This kickboxer looking to better that record tonight. He's got his work cut out for him against Brandon, that is for sure. Taking center stage and definitely looking to finish this quickly. I'm sure. Oh, there we go. Hard low kick and Kalani countering quickly. Both men looking to stab their authority here. Those strikes are so quick. A kick each there, and you can uh, see already these men are not going to back down from each other. You can hear those hitting home. And Kalani goes down. That kick found its mark perfectly. Uh, the ref going to give him a count to 10. He decides the killer is too good. He's good to go, and the dance will continue. That was a love tap for sure, but Kalani's still a wide awake and moving. If a little careful. And a big kick there, but just missing Brandon, who uh, counters and also misses. These guys are throwing fight any kicks, but each of them not bothered. Oh, here we go! Brandon down from a kick. Kalani moving in on him, but the ref won't stop it because Brandon is protecting himself. And Kalani gonna, going to work there and wasting no time at all. Shots raining down, but Brandon rolling him, using the strikes to his advantage. Uh, Kalani uh, tying Brandon up. Uh, less than uh, 10 seconds left on the ground. Looks like he's trying to uh, trying a high guard and Brandon posting off but the ref gonna stand them up. 20 seconds only allowed on the ground. All right, here we go, back there. And I can tell you who's ahead on points in the stage, at least I can. Great shots from both fighters and now a swing and a miss from Brandon. There, and uh, Kalani trying to use it, but now gets the ropes and Brandon and Kalani with another takedown. Just 30 seconds left of this round and Kalani in control on top here. But Brandon has his head trapped and Brandon managed to get up. Oh, uh, uh, Kalani tap. Okay, uh, that missed hook here and uh, yes, no submission hole, but the tap. And uh, right, so that's gonna give Brandon the win by submission. Yeah, he got the love tap. Yeah, now he fights for the Yeah, we keep pretty fight stress. We fight exhaustion. Uh, I think we fall on a fight a little bit different. All right, so Brandon Faree gonna be taking on the winner of the next fight. That's Scott Valentine up against Dwayne Fenter. My name is Scott Valentine. I'm predominantly a boxing and a jiu-jitsu fighter. I'm a lot more comfortable not having a nickname, you know. I just feel that there's not a one word or whatever to, or catchy word to describe my style. I can't really say that I have a favorite move, but I do know that uh, uh, if I can just calm down, that there is a chance that I am able to knock the guy out or, you know, submit him. Right, so it's Scott Valentine fighting Dwayne Fenner for a shot at Brandon in the regional final tonight. Ten-year age gap with MMA versus kickboxing. Uh, first up out of the red corner, Dwayne Fenner with 25 wins, and that's right, no losses. That's impressive. A lot to lose here tonight up against Scott Valentine with just six wins, but also not one loss. Somebody's going home unhappy tonight, and the other one taking a clean record through to the uh, regional final in Johannesburg. Nice. First with some big shots and some more and pushing Dwayne to the ropes now. Going for the double leg takedown. And now in Dwayne's guard, he needs to pass to start scoring points. He's settling in there. Dwayne making it really difficult to post up. Uh, but he passed straight to the half guard and he can score some points here. Dwayne having none of it and making sure nothing more happens in the last five seconds on the ground. Uh, we've seen a lot of the fighters using the 20-second rule to their advantage, letting them stand back up and get to the trading of shots instead of being tight on the ground. 
Up they get. All right, and back they go. Dwayne with a kick and punch combo straight away. He's not happy with a takedown. Moving back now, maybe luring Scott in and with some more big kicks. Wow, he's hitting home with those. Scott needs to move. He can't take too many of those. And Scott, no! Oh, Dwayne taking him to the canvas and straight away following him. And now, yes, Scott getting up and Dwayne uh, opting to pull guard. And Scott working to make space from there and passing now. And again, Dwayne in trouble on the ground. Scott working those shots in such a clinical way. Dwayne needs to cover up there. Those elbows are going to cut him. And he does. And Scott punishing for that uh, with the arm up. The arm bar in. Here we go. Oh, my word. And it's a, oh, saved by the bell. Uh, right. So Dwayne wasn't going anywhere from that. Absolutely saved. They're going to stand back up, and I'm sure Scott not happy about that. And he makes it known. What a right. That overhand and all the intention behind it. He just turned and walked. He knows how hard that hit. Oh, man, that's it. It's over. The ref has called this fight. What a battle. I can't believe what we're seeing here. Bang, look at that. Dwayne leaving that arm out too long. And Scott just sending that overhand right flying. And there it is, the winner, Scott Valentine. I haven't competed in about four years, so... I felt really, really rusty. I knew I couldn't get excited too soon. I think I was just lucky. I was lucky. Coming up after the break, it's the welterweight final between Brandon Faree and Scott Valentine. Nick, it's not an aggressive type of thing. I'm very humble. I feel very humble to be in this game. I say I'm more of a retaliate fighter. I'm waiting for my opponent. And counter attack. Additionally, I stayed at, at after school. I stayed in Cape Town, and it was a bit of a rough neighborhood, so I had to learn to defend myself. And um, yeah, I started off there, moved on, uh, came back to Pretoria, and uh, got introduced to kickboxing. And then it, I just excelled from there. Since I started kickboxing 17 years ago, I've been representing South Africa, I've been in the national and, and presidential squad um, for the last 17 years. Uh, I've also had various SA titles and, and uh, well, been SA champion in, in, in different affiliations. Opportunities there, I take it, whether it's elbow or knee, uh, whether it's in the clinch, distance striking. Obviously, my feet's quite potent, so I like using my legs. Oh, Brandon Faree, getting it done! Something that gets me focused, it's uh, off the chart, but it's uh, tile breaking. It also pinpoint, pinpoint the, the exact position and then break it. If I can get you in the corner and imagine your face as a towel, it could be broken. Once you get them, tot and with the first hour fall, it's all that stress. Van ons weet niet hoe het beter weg te steken is aan die over het niet stress niet overkomt van een schoone van die fout. Everyone out there, beware. Uh, you watch the love tap, you might fall in love. I have been involved in MMA a long time. Uh, the gyms that I started at were stand-up based predominantly, so I'm comfortable standing uh, standing up with the with the fighter, trading with the fighter, blocking, slipping. However, I do like the ground. Up. Basically, I was a small guy in school. Um, and uh, I did martial arts, and um, once I started uh, winning or losing, you know, that guy respected me afterwards, and, you know, I enjoyed the respect, actually. I prefer doing training that um, do certain things like running, um, which is uh, the core base of every sort of fitness thing that you have to do. Um, but, you know, if you want to get fit for swimming, you must swim. If you want to get fit for running, you must run. Tennis, play tennis. So I believe in the functional MMA training, boxing, sparring, uh, grappling, ground and pound. Those are the aspects that I focus on. I enjoy the versatility about the sport, you know, where it can go, we can focus on clinch, we can focus on the ground, it can boxing, we, we block in kicks. You know, there's, a, there's a whole science to every, every single one of those disciplines. So there's never a chance of being bored, if I can put it that way. During a fight, I'm focusing on trying to find a balance between aggression and trying to stay as calm as possible without freezing. I'm a potential Alifest champion because of my adaptability. Yeah, I can change from where it's got to go on the ground, on the stand-up, during the clinch. I'm able to switch mindsets. So, for the regional final, 
battle here in Johannesburg tonight. Scott Valentine against Brandon Fareed. Brandon, we've seen incredibly dangerous with his setup combos. Great posture. The love tap will be looking to put those gloves to work. Scott Valentine, we've seen a danger on the ground and a serious overhand right that can end this fight quickly. He came through with a clean record and with seven wins, he'll be desperately wanting number eight uh, to put him through the championship finals. Here we go. Scott Valentine up against Brandon Faree at the regional final here in Johannesburg. And the bell goes. And striding out to the center is Scott Brandon with a kick, but Scott really not phased and not coming out with that overhand right. Not trying to get to Mark and Brandon out quickly. I'm sure he's aware of why Scott is here. Oh, what a great, what a great cook from Scott. Oh, that right of his is so lethal. And he just comes forward with absolute malice. And now going for the takedown is Scott. But Brandon looking for a quick guillotine and Scott straight out. Brandon is not in a good place. We've seen Scott comfortable here and he's throwing big shots now. Brandon tying him up, but Scott looking for that armbar and not getting it. But he'll settle for that and big hammer shots now. Using those elbows to open up a hole. Bam, in they go. Okay, the ref's going to stand them up. And it's another fight of today by the 22nd uh, really good Scott. Can he pull up another take elbow? Brandon's kicks are taking a toll on Scott. He won't want more of those finding his body. And there's that overhand, but not hitting him. It'll go to ground again. And Scott back where he likes to be, looking for that knee slice through. And he gets it. He passes, controlling Brandon so well on the ground. Brandon just trying to limit Scott's movement. Only a few seconds left. And the ref telling them not to hold gloves there. You can't use the glove to keep your grip. And of the 20 seconds anyway, and they stand up again. Brandon's happy with that, and I'm making space straight away for his combos. Oh, and you can see those kicks are hurting Scott. He doesn't want to stand with Brandon anymore, and Scott in trouble now. He's tired, and Brandon using those knees, but Brandon too close. Scott with another takedown right at the end of the round. Okay, not too sure who won that round. All right, let's have a look at that again. There's the, uh, there's the takedown from Scott. Bang. Uh, he's not enjoying the kicks, and uh, trying with that right of his. All right, so uh, Scott looking to keep away from those strikes. This round and, oh, he's throwing a massive right there. Wow, he just surged forward. Brandon with a big kick, but Scott takes him down and ends in side control. Here we go. And uh, the neon belly for that control, but it's also good for an armbar uh, set up. Brandon smashing away at Scott. He's not going to let Scott have this one. Scott, though, with big shots of his own for Brandon. And uh, now he's turning for the armbar, and he gets it in. And he gets the tap. Oh, that was immediately, that was so deep. Bam, he's so happy about that. Perfect setup by Scott, and Brandon was tapping before Scott hit the floor. That was a beautiful arm bar. And there we go, winner by submission, Scott Valentine. It's hard to fight again so many hours later. I find myself coming cold, and I wasn't able to move. I only defend and stay, so I, I knew I had to take it the sub when I go down. Wow, what a great fight. Scott Valentine and Junior SCN have both qualified for the LFS Championship Finals in Johannesburg on the 15th of October this year. And I can't wait to see what happens.